it's really important to be really honest about where you're at as an organization or an entity or an individual with your engagement level. We really need to start by really listening to what parents and families in general have to say. Youth, families, um, kin, anybody that comes into contact with our kiddos, we really need to hear what they have to say um, and be coming to them to build that trust and ensure psychological safety, prior communication, and the building a system um, for bringing them to the table where they understand from day one that you respect their opinion as much as you respect the opinions of the paid professionals at that table. I would also advise um, diversifying representation. It is a lot of pressure for one or even two lived experts to be in a room full of system workers, system leaders, and um, having, it feels like a burden, but having um, the responsibility of speaking for all. That's not uh, realistic or fair. So I would advise making sure there's a diversity of experience, a diversity of identity, and a diversity of whether system involvement was a quote success or there were a lot of rooms for, for improvement. It's like setting that stage where, um, you know, we're not where we want to be, or maybe we're on our way to being where we want to be, but, um, but just being really honest so that you can make the strides that you need to make, where you're not assuming that you're doing more, trying to look better, and then you're skipping steps along the way. We had a conversation with a group of young people with lived experience, and one of them said that Lots of times they feel like agencies are are scared to engage in real co-design because they want to hide, um, you know, their their flaws. And I thought that was so interesting because the people that they're trying to hide the flaws from are the very people who know them best. We as parents, especially parents that have struggled with any kind of system involvement or have any kind of trauma that involves any systems, we we already have a distrust of most of the systems. And when, when um, any folks come in and start throwing around basically their power to us, it's gonna make us shut down and not wanna share anything with them. I think it's important to prepare through reading, through attending webinars, um, but most importantly, reflecting, I think that um, that oftentimes we're, we're attending webinars and we're getting taught what youth engagement means and what authentic means and how that looks like, but there's not really a lot of reflection that happens. Requiring um, the same way that a director would need approval, requiring that that approval comes from someone who has walked the walk and walked the system. And that will, um, that will ensure that both perspectives are of equal value. And that takes away from the invitation feeling because if you're invited to something, you're not a key holder. You are invited as a, a guest. They get final decision-making power. Uh, my team is fully trained and designed. They're all master designers. But again, in the context of child welfare system, we are not experts on that. And so we defer to them to tell us what is right and what is wrong. Redefining power to include lived expertise means that those however many years of experience, that is qualified, qualified experience just like workforce experiences. I think a couple of things that organizations get hung up on when it comes to youth engagement. Um, one is even even starting sometimes. I think sometimes folks are nervous because they don't feel ready to start, but sometimes um, it, it, it is going to be a learning experience. There are ways to prepare for it, but also just jumping in and, and being open to learning from the people that you are engaging, I think is the best way to do it. Of course, it's also there is a certain level of, of preparedness that that folks should um, should uh, take so that there, there isn't harm done. Um, 
and as long as there's some some um, some open mindedness to to um, to engaging people with the experience and seeing the value, I think that it could be a, a pretty smooth learning process. I think sometimes we begin to think about people with lived experience, young people, parents as um, the beneficiary of this process and therefore they should just be doing it because it will help them in the long run rather than they are providing real quality information, um, expertise that someone in academia will be compensated for you know, or someone uh, as a consultant would be compensated for. And so, you know, how are we valuing their time, not just in um, consideration and, and deep thought, but also monetarily, because we live in a world where time is money in a lot of ways.